I'm Joshua Bardwell, and today I'm going to be showing you the Furious FPV Mosquito. This is a 70mm brushless micro FPV quadcopter. I'm going to tell you what's good about it, what's bad about it, and most importantly to many of you, whether I think I would buy this or the Hoverbot Nano. Stay tuned. I'm going to start by listing off some of the features and characteristics of this copter. And I didn't set out to make this a head-to-head -head video about this versus the Hoverbot Nano. But I kind of feel like I can't avoid it. I, I like to review a product on its own merits. But this copter is exactly the same price as the Hoverbot Nano. It's $249. And they both, they're not, they don't fit exactly the same place. But they're both micro brushless FPV quadcopters. So it kind of seems like the comparisons are unavoidable. And since I just reviewed the Hoverbot Nano, you can check out the upper right hand corner of the screen if you want to see my review of that. Uh, it, it's kind of fresh in my mind, so I kind of can't resist comparing them. So this is 70 millimeters. The Hoverbot Nano is 90 millimeters. The Hoverbot is a little bit bigger. Uh, this one has a plastic frame and you can see it was originally uh, fabricated 3d printed it was designed 3d printed these are not 3d printed frames uh they're i don't know injection molded or whatever whereas the hoverbot nano has a carbon fiber and delrin frame and that brings to mind one of the biggest differences between them this has a different durability profile than the hoverbot nano the hoverbot nano is going to be really rigid it protects the props really well. I, I didn't really break a single prop on the Hoverbot Nano uh, until, you know, and the whole time I had it. They got a little chewed up, but I never broke one. I did break one of the Delrin legs on the Hoverbot Nano, which are designed to be a breakable. Uh, they, uh, they break and they protect the frame, and they're replaceable. Um, on this one, the frame is made of plastic, which means it's got a little bit of give. It's very tough. I've crashed the Dickens out of it and it hasn't broken, but one of the things it means is that it can interfere very easily with the props. And I found that the props on this copter were way, way more fragile than the props on the Hoverbot Nano. Now, that of course depends on what style of props you're putting on the Hoverbot Nano. I did have some big, chunky two-blade props on the Hoverbot Nano, whereas these are much smaller four-blade props, and you can, you can put various types of props on here. But the bottom line is that the Mosquito doesn't do as good a job of protecting the props because the frame is, is flexible like this. I broke, well you can see I got a broken one on there now. I, I, bro I broke a lot of props while flying this in relatively mild crashes. Now, if you don't mind changing props, that's fine, but it does mean you're gonna spend a lot more time pulling the props off, replacing them, whereas with the Hoverbot Nano, it was a little easier just to get right back in the air. The Mosquito has a few things really going for it. And the first thing that it really has going for it is flight performance. The first thing I did when I got both of these copters is I just hovered them and I did some line of sight flips and rolls. And uh, you saw in my review of the Hoverbot Nano, the Nano had a real problem kind of, it was really twitchy and kind of hard to control in some ways. It was easy to like get behind it and lose control of it and just overcorrect. And I tried to tune it and I never really got it flying great. Uh, it got it flying pretty good, but it was always kind of felt a little bit like I was fighting it. This guy flew just like I expected it to fly. That's not to say that it, 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 you couldn't tell that it was a smaller copter. And that's not to say that a little bit of tuning didn't sharpen things up a little bit. But when I did those first flips and rolls, uh, it felt like flying a much bigger copter. It felt just as controllable and responsive as a bigger copter. And that for me, I mean, it's a little bit unfair to say that I'm gonna judge a micro by how much it flies like a bigger copter, but the bigger copter flies really good. And so that's the standard by which I judge the micro, so fine. So I would say between the Hoverbot and this one, this one gets the edge for sort of basic, you know, flight performance. Since we're talking about flight performance, May as well take this time to give you some sample flight video of me flying around my house with this guy.
Another place that the Mosquito really shines is in its, its feature set. Uh, Furious is really good at building all kinds of great features into their gear. So this guy comes from the factory with telemetry. This is something that I really miss in many of the micro quads. I hate having to fly off a timer or just waiting for the, the throttle to feel mushy. I want to know what my battery voltage is. And this guy, you just enable free sky telemetry on your, on your Tyrannus, just like you would on any other model, and you got VBAT ready to go. It even has current sensing, which I find a little hard to believe that they've really got a current sensor in there, but maybe they do. I mean... Furious puts current sensors on a lot of their gear, so in theory, you could even get the current, assuming that that's actually a legit readout. The Mosquito also comes with a buzzer. A buzzer, very nice for finding your copter or just, you know, getting status and so forth. I really like that as well. So this has in many ways got the features that many micros give up, uh, the features of a larger copter that many micros give up. So the Mosquito in many ways is a shrunk down larger copter. It's got many of the features that the micros give up, but you don't have to give them up when flying this copter. The Mosquito comes with a cloverleaf antenna on it, whereas the Hoverbot comes with a linear, uh, linear dipole antenna. And between the two, the dipole is definitely going to be the more resilient of the two. The cloverleaf, of course, is going to give you better coverage, but it's also going to be less durable. That being said, the speeds that we're dealing with on a microcopter and the weight of the copter is so small, it's more likely that this is going to survive than, than if, like, on a 5-inch, I mean. So, so I haven't had any really much damage. I got a little nick here in the enamel you can kind of see there. But the antenna itself is really pretty solid. And let me take this apart for you so you can see what's on the inside. If we take this apart, you can see how it goes together. We've got the video transmitter here. And it is just plugged in here. There's just a little micro transmitter, 25 milliwatts. And it has got a UFL connector holding the antenna to it. So if you do break the antenna, it's not too hard to replace it. It's uh, direct soldered to the camera. Image quality on the camera is acceptable. Uh, not the best I've ever seen, but acceptable. And then if we set that aside, here is the receiver right here. And this is actually something that uh, many people have trouble figuring out how to bind the receiver on this one. Yeah, you got to take the camera pod off the top to bind it. Here's the bind button right here. And that's how you're going to bind your receiver. Hopefully you'll only have to ever do that once. And then it's not too hard, but there you go. So that's how that goes together. Getting it all back in there is a little tricky. Making it all fit. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to do that on camera. But uh, yeah, it just all kind of goes back in there. And you're good to go. And that's going to do it for this review of the Furious FPV Mosquito. Uh, between this and the Hoverbot, I think the person who's going to buy this one is the person who cares, number one, cares about the features that it brings to the table, the VBAP monitoring, even current monitoring maybe, buzzer built in. Uh, it's got all that stuff that you normally have to give up when you get a micro. It's a little bit smaller than the Hoverbot. It's a little closer to a whoop in size. So the people who say, oh, the Hoverbot's too big, too powerful to fly indoors. You can't fly under your couch with it. Well, yeah, here you go. This is more, more a direct sort of brushless equivalent to the whoop. Um, the flight handling out of the box, for me anyway, was better on this one, although that may have to do, like I said, with the props that my Hoverbot came with. I think, though, for me, between the two, uh, I would take the Hoverbot because it's so frustrating to me to be breaking props every freaking time I crash, and the Hoverbot gave me more flight time and less time changing props and waiting for props to come in the mail so I could put more props on it and fly. This thing, I mean, you crash these things a lot, right? I do. Flying indoors, I crash way more flying indoors than I do flying outdoors at 70 miles an hour. And every freaking time, every other time I crash this thing, I was changing a prop and I found it a little bit frustrating. That being said, it's a good copter. It's, it's maybe a great copter. It's one of the better, one of the best micros I've flown, especially in terms of out-of-the-box uh, flight handling. Uh, so it's definitely got that going for it. You may be sitting there thinking, you know, this review was a little bit not quite up to Joshua's normal standards. I'm usually a lot more in-depth, uh, do a tuning video and a testing and a flight and all this stuff. I got to tell you, I'm starting to wonder if I've been searching for the micro that really does it for me. I've tried brushed micros and brushless micros. Maybe you should fly a freaking tiny whoop. Maybe that's the one, right? And just, I always find myself wanting more than I'm getting from them. And maybe I just don't like micros. Uh, I don't know. 
Uh, I'm not going to give up on them entirely, but if I keep flying them and keep, I always feel a little bit disappointed in what I get out of them. And maybe that's because I live in the South where even in the dead of winter, you can probably still get a few packs in. And I have a great big yard that I can fly in, as you know. Uh, so maybe I'm just not the target audience for micros. I don't know. But there you go. There's your review of the Furious FPV Mosquito. You got any questions, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching. And as always, whatever you fly, indoors or outdoors, brushed or brushless, as long as you're having a good time, that's what matters. Happy flying.